Hi everyone, and welcome to the CompTIA A plus 220-1001, Module 1, Lesson 1.4, Explaining BIOS and the UEFI. Overview of the BIOS Basic Input-Output System. I'm your instructor, Bill Price. Our learning objectives for this lesson is to understand what the BIOS is, understand the roles of the BIOS, understand the new BIOS, which is called UEFI and its roles, and finally understand the CMOS, and we're going to talk about the CMOS battery. So let's go ahead and get started. The basic input output system, or BIOS. Before the operating system loads on your computer, the system runs what is called the basic input output system. Even if there were no hardware or operating system installed on your computer, BIOS would still run. BIOS, in fact, is actually what starts the computer. Now we've learned from our previous lessons that the first part of BIOS is called POST, the power on self test. POST goes out and checks the motherboard to make sure all the hardware connected to it is in good working order. And we know from our previous lessons again, if it does not find everything in a good working order or something is not working correctly or the way it should work, POST would either give a visual text message, error message on the display screen after the video card initializes or issue a series of beep codes. Now, after everything runs correctly and boots up the way it should, the next step, BIOS looks for what is called the bootloader. And that bootloader, which it hands the startup process over to the operating system on your computer, and that system will then load. Now, BIOS itself resides on a chip on your motherboard. Now, this is going to differ and vary between motherboard manufacturers. You can check your motherboard's manufacturer's manual for the exact location of the BIOS chip on your motherboard. Now, this is one of the older motherboards that I have in my lab. And you see I've indicated in the bottom right-hand corner the exact location of the BIOS chip there. Now, the BIOS or we call it now the traditional or legacy BIOS, that has been around for over 25 years. Older systems talk through the BIOS to the hardware. And also BIOS had limited support or limited hardware support. Some devices were not even initialized or some devices were not even detected by the BIOS. Like the NIC card, for example, the BIOS could not detect if the NIC card was functioning or non-functioning. So this is a big limitation of the traditional and legacy BIOS. BIOS settings and changes had to be saved somewhere. Um, these changes and settings were saved to a type of memory called the Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor, or CMOS. Now, CMOS had to have a power source to store the settings. So that was a big disadvantage. If the CMOS lost that power source, it would lose the settings. So let's talk about the new BIOS, which is called the UEFI. The UEFI stands for the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, UEFI, and that's a new standard. It's based on Intel's EFI, the Extensible Firmware Interface. The new UEFI has been replacing BIOS in the newer systems that's been manufactured, and eventually the legacy BIOS will be no longer in use. Now, there's many features and benefits to the new UEFI, which gives it a lot of advantages over the old traditional or legacy BIOS. Now, let's talk about the advantages of the UEFI. The UEFI firmware can boot from drives up to 2.2 terabytes and larger. The theoretical limit is 9.4 zettabytes. UEFI supports a secure boot, which means the operating system can be checked for validity to ensure no malware has tampered with the boot process. This is before it loads. So that's a great security feature right there. UEFI has a pre-boot environment, has its own shell drivers, and it can browse the internet to download drivers. It can do file transfers. It also has remote diagnostics, all without the help of an additional operating system. Changes to the UEFI, UEFI are saved to flash memory. It does not need to be saved to CMOS, which is a great advantage. Let's talk about the CMOS battery. In systems with the legacy BIOS, settings were saved to the CMOS, so a constant power source was needed to maintain the configuration. The CMOS battery maintained that constant power to make sure no settings were lost. 
If the CMOS battery power was lost, then all your settings were lost. And again, remember, the CMOS had to have a constant source of power to keep your memory settings of all the changes that you've made, passwords or whatever. In fact, if the BIOS had a password for security reasons, simply removing the CMOS battery would clear those settings back to default. You can see what type of big security risk that was. In newer systems with the UEFI, the CMOS battery simply keeps the date and time because there's no need because, again, in UEFI, all the changes are saved to flash memory. Okay, so let's review what we talked about. We defined and talked about what was the BIOS. We've discussed the role of the BIOS in a system. We discussed the UEFI and its roles. And we, we reviewed the CMOS and the CMOS battery. All right, that was a great lesson. A lot of great things to go over and talk about. And we're going to move over to the next lesson. I will see you then. Thanks for joining.